Hello, I'm a day late reviewing 2013's The Machine. The Machine is the story of brilliant roboticist AI engineer Vincent McCarthy, played by Toby Stevens, on a mission to save his dying daughter. Unfortunately for him, he's working for the Ministry of Defense in the UK, trying to make killer robots to be the perfect infiltration unit in their Cold War with China. Personally, I like to think of this movie as a precursor to the Terminator films, but that's getting ahead of ourselves. As the film opens, we see McCarthy and his fellow scientist, Lucy, doing an experiment on a soldier named Paul Dawson. He has a severe brain injury. They have implanted a chip in his brain with the hope that it will replace the missing brain matter and allow the soldier to live a more normal life. With the chip off, Dawson is non-responsive. Once they turn it on, Dawson's eyes literally light up and he becomes aware of the two scientists in the room. McCarthy asks Dawson his name, but he can't remember. Dawson asks to see his mother. McCarthy asks Dawson his mother's name. Once again, he can't remember. McCarthy decides to do an empathy test. He places two cups on the table in front of the soldier. The cups are marked A and B. Lucy places a tennis ball under the cup marked A and leaves the room. McCarthy then takes the tennis ball from A and places it under the cup marked B. He then has Lucy come back into the room. McCarthy then asks Dawson what he thinks Lucy will say about the location of the ball when asked. Dawson says cup B. McCarthy tells Dawson that Lucy didn't see him move the ball, so why would she think that the ball had moved? Dawson has no answer for that other than to say that he saw McCarthy move the ball and facts are facts. McCarthy becomes annoyed. He tells Lucy that the tech is a dead end. Lucy says that they have sunk a lot of money into the research and who cares if the soldier failed an empathy test. McCarthy is all about improving the soldier's quality of life and Lucy just wants usable soldiers. Dawson then picks up a pen off of the table and holds it to McCarthy's neck saying that he wants to see his mother. They try to reassure him that everything is okay, but Dawson wounds McCarthy, kills Lucy, and another soldier who responds to the alarm before he is finally stopped. Cut to an unspecified amount of time later. We see that McCarthy is physically healed from the attack as he enters a room to perform a Turing test on a computer AI. The Turing test is used to see if you can tell the difference between a human and an artificial intelligence. After a series of questions, he causes the computer to glitch and tells the programmer he better have a look at his computer and then leaves. Cut to even later as McCarthy drives to the city to see his daughter. She looks to be unaware that he is there as he feeds her via a peg tube. Then we are back to another Turing test. The programmer is named Ava, played by Arrow's Katie Lotz. She says that her program is mostly learned through conversation with herself and not by being programmed. McCarthy begins the test. He is impressed by the answer to a question and he has his entourage leave before seeing the next candidate. He goes over to talk to Ava. He says that what she needs is a quantum computer and her AI would be able to pass the test and offers her a job working with him. The catch being, of course, he works for the Ministry of Defense. Next we see Ava driving out to the base and she has a brief conversation with her AI. She asks it about the test and the program says that it realizes it made a mistake when talking with McCarthy and correctly identifies said mistake, saying that it hopes to talk to McCarthy again. A bit later we see Ava driving up to the military research camp. She stops her car to get her ID out and an old woman opens the door and says that they have her son. Ava says that she doesn't know what she's talking about when soldiers roughly grab the old lady and pull her from the car. Ava gets out of the car to tell him not to manhandle the old woman when she gets placed on the hood of her car and arrested for her troubles. Cut to Ava sitting in a holding cell and McCarthy gives her a little grief over getting arrested on her first day. She defends herself saying that a crazy woman jumped in her car. McCarthy knows about that woman. She is the mother of Paul Dawson, the soldier that we saw at the opening scene that attacked him. McCarthy tells Ava that the woman's son is dead, that he died two years ago at the port of Hulan, which would make it seem that the Cold War with China is not so cold. McCarthy then asks her if she would like to see the lab. As they're going into the more secure areas, they are checked in by guards that have scars on the sides of their heads. Ava asks about it, and McCarthy tells her that all the soldiers are veterans with brain injuries that have been fixed using implants. Ava says that's great, and wants to know when the technology is going to make its way to public use, and McCarthy responds that they're still working out the bugs, as a few months after getting the implants, the soldiers quit talking. Unbeknownst to him, the soldiers have developed their own language that we can see them use when normal people aren't around. We then cut to a scene where several soldiers are in a large empty area. Two are on their knees surrounded by several others. The leader of those surrounding the two is a woman that we will later find out is named Suri and is the assistant to the head of the base. 
She has her soldiers pour gasoline on the two on their knees and then has a discussion with one of the two. She then sets one of them on fire. Back to McCarthy and Ava driving on a golf cart through the complex until they come to an area containing his lab. It is a large empty warehouse with a smaller building inside of it. The smaller building is the lab. They go in and McCarthy shows her the quantum computer. She is thrilled to see it when Thompson introduces himself. Thompson is played by Dennis Lawson, best known as Wedge in the original Star Wars trilogy. Thompson is the head of the base, although not a soldier. He gives Ava some grief over her past politics, to which she responds that she was only 19 at the time. McCarthy says that they hired her for her brilliant AI work and not her politics. They then take her to another room to demonstrate the prosthetics they are making for their soldiers and eventually for the robots. The first thing they show is a prosthetic arm that is covered in a material they call a spider silk weave and claim that it is bullet, bomb, and fireproof. It feels like human skin, but it is translucent, so they have to dye the material to get it look like skin. They then place the prosthetic arm on a double amputee named James for a demonstration. He shows that he can flex and extend all the fingers, and then crushes a marble in the hand with no damage to the skin. McCarthy asks him how he likes the new model, and the soldier touches his face with a look of amazement. James then asks Ava if he can touch her hand, saying that he misses the touch of another person. Ava agrees, but McCarthy says it isn't a good idea as the carbon fiber muscles are very strong and he would like the soldier to be more used to the prosthetic and have better control. Ava says the soldier looked like he has good control and extends her hand. James slowly strokes her fingers with his thumb and then pulls her to him as he stands and whirls her around to make it look like they are dancing. They move a couple of feet away from the others and he whispers to Ava, Help me, Area 6. And then the others come over and James apologizes, saying he got carried away. Ava asks how long it will take to transfer her AI to the quantum computer, and McCarthy tells her a week. Thompson says they have all the makings for the new robot soldiers. They just need a working AI and to get busy as war is coming. We then see McCarthy and Ava back in the lab. She is wearing an electronic skullcap that McCarthy uses to map brain function. He asks her about what she likes and what she fears. She then asks him about Area 6. McCarthy says it's an area where they keep the severely wounded soldiers, awaiting their chips and prosthetics. She says that James seemed like a prisoner, and McCarthy says he doesn't know anything about that. I know nothing. Nothing. And leaves to go get a face scanner. Ava says that she will start the program and accesses her computer. She then opens a file on brain implants and sees the name Paul Dawson, the son of the woman who got in her car earlier in the film. She then tries to open the files on Area 6, but they are restricted. A day or so later, we see her coming to work, and she takes a side trip to Area 6. She manages to slip past a couple of guards and comes to an area overlooking the cages where the wounded soldiers are being held. Then several soldiers come up behind her, and she leaves. We hear recordings of conversation Ava has had since arriving and some digital machine noise, and then we cut to Suri, looking as if she's getting this information. A bit later, Ava is sitting in a chair, and McCarthy has her make several different faces as he scans her expressions. Once they are done, he warns her not to get lost again, referring to her adventure to Area 6. He says there's lots of dark secrets in this place, and he would hate to see anything bad happen to her. Cut to Thompson's office. Suri comes in with some files on Ava for him. She pulls up video of Ava at her computer hacking into the system to look at information on Area 6. Cue ominous music. A bit later, we see McCarthy and Ava standing at a table that has a hologram of an electronic brainstem floating above them. McCarthy apologizes for being so blunt in his warning the other day, and the AI says to him that it thinks that Ava is still mad at him. Then Thompson and Suri show up to congratulate Ava and McCarthy on the AI passing the Turing test. Thompson calls the AI machine and asks it how to win a war against China. The machine tells him to use an android to infiltrate and assassinate the heads of Chinese leadership. Cut to McCarthy and Ava leaving the base in his car. She asks him why he's still working for the MOD if he hates working there. He tells her about his daughter, that she has a brain disorder and he was hoping that his research would help her. Ava's impressed that he's stealing money from the War Department to help cure brain damage and says that she wants to help him. Well past the base, they come across Dawson's mother and she has her back to them, weeping in the middle of the road. Ava has McCarthy stop the car so they can help her. Turns out it is a Chinese agent who stabs Ava and then somebody cold cocks McCarthy from behind. We then cut to Thompson's office and a video feed pops up on his screen and shows Ava being shot twice to finish her off. Excellent. He nods in approval and turns the feed off and goes back to his golf game. Cut to a bit later with McCarthy staring at a computer screen with Ava's picture on it. Thompson comes up behind him and says that the Chinese have always been trying to get members of the robotics team. 
McCarthy asks why they didn't kill him, and Thompson replies that a patrol showed up just in time to save him. Cut to a bit later, and McCarthy tells Thompson that he wants to give the robot Ava's face. Thompson asks if this is some sort of monument to all of McCarthy's dead assistants, but has no objections to it. We get a nice montage of the machine being brought to life, sort of something similar to Ghost in the Shell. Once the machine is activated, they decide to perform a number of psychological tests, one of which leads to the death of a man wearing a clown mask. The machine is shocked. It didn't know that the clown was a man. It repeatedly says, I'm sorry, until it freezes. Thompson goes to another department and recruits another scientist to work with McCarthy. The scientist later goes to offer his services to McCarthy, but he isn't interested in a new assistant. Later, McCarthy goes to Area 6 and talks with James. McCarthy says that he has heard that James has lost the power of speech and that he is working on a way to fix that. He tells James that Ava is dead and that he thinks they had her killed. He then says he's going to try and get James out of the base and to safety. Just then a pair of soldiers show up and McCarthy leaves. The soldiers come over to James and say something to him in their machine language. Shuri then shows up and also talks to him in machine language. Then we cut to McCarthy in his lab looking at the machine. He says to the machine that he has run diagnostics and there's nothing wrong with it, so why doesn't it speak or move? Some lights flicker in one of its hands, but that's it. McCarthy leaves and Suri enters to look at the machine. While touching its face, the face lights up from inside and the machine grabs Suri's hand. It then speaks to Suri in machine language. Once done, it lets Suri go and she leaves. Later we see McCarthy return to his lab to find the machine active and looking at things in his office. The machine explains that it was sad and that's why it was not working earlier. McCarthy then gets a call about his daughter. She is sick. McCarthy is about to leave when the machine grabs his arm and won't let go. It begins to hurt him and McCarthy orders it to let go and says that it can't use its strength to bully others. He then tells it that they will play some games when he comes back. We cut to Suri speaking machine language to some soldiers in a different section of the base. Obviously something is up. McCarthy arrives at the hospital and the doctors tell him that it appears that his daughter has aspirated some food while eating. Aspiration means the food went into the lungs instead of her stomach. They're going to start her on some antibiotics to fight any potential infection. Later, McCarthy returns to the base and the team of scientists are at the outer door to the warehouse that McCarthy's lab is in. They say the machine has broken free and is on the loose in the warehouse. McCarthy goes in and finds the machine listening to music and dancing. The machine sees McCarthy and gives him a hug. He goes into his lab and the machine follows. He asks it, why did it hug him? The machine replies that it found a picture of his daughter in his wallet and asks if his daughter is sick and is that why McCarthy is sad. He is amazed that the machine made that deduction. The machine explains its reasoning and says that it's sorry his daughter is ill and asks if he can fix her. He cheers up and changes the subject. He asks the machine how can he know that it is alive and not some clever imitation. They have a discussion about what constitutes being alive when some soldiers show up to make sure that everything is alright. He assures them that everything is okay and they leave. Cut to a bit later and we see McCarthy walking past another section of the base and he sees Thompson talking to the scientist that offered to be his new assistant. And even later we see the machine trying to draw on the lab while McCarthy is gone. Thompson comes in and has the machine access secret files he had written into her code. It's a file on combat skills in foreign languages. I know Kung Fu. Cut to McCarthy at the hospital. It's bad news. His daughter now has pneumonia and the doctors want permission to perform a bronchoscopy to remove the food from her lungs. He gives his permission and the doctor says they will put her on the surgery schedule. Back at the base, Thompson brings the machine to a room that has the Chinese agent that killed Ava bound and on his knees. Thompson tells the machine that they're going to have to let the agent go even though they know that he's going to try and kill McCarthy again. They have a discussion how to stop him and the machine eventually says that she could kill him. Thompson has a guard uncuff the prisoner and drop a knife next to him. Thompson and the guard step out, and the Chinese agent tries to escape. The machine gets in his way, and the agent attacks it with the knife. The machine defends itself with some martial arts until it breaks the agent's knife arm. Thompson then steps up to the machine and tells it to kill the agent, but the machine refuses, saying that McCarthy told her not to kill. Thompson says that's okay, and he tries to reason with the machine using a different tact. Back at the hospital, McCarthy scans his daughter's face and then her brain. He then returns to the lab and finds the machine hiding under a desk. The machine says it doesn't like it here anymore, and eventually McCarthy gets it to admit that it killed a man last night while he was gone. She says she did it because she didn't want to die. Cut to McCarthy and Thompson discussing the machine. 
McCarthy says that he believes the machine is alive, while Thompson is very dubious. McCarthy gets Thompson to agree to let him prove that the machine is alive and hold off on more training as a soldier. McCarthy then goes back to the lab and has further discussion with the machine about whether it is alive or not. McCarthy says that he wants to believe that the machine is alive, but how does he know? The machine replies that it trusts him with its life. McCarthy then gets a call from his daughter's doctor and says they're going to be taking her to surgery soon. While he is on the phone, the machine whispers, because I love you. McCarthy then leaves for the hospital. Cut to the machine fighting and beating multiple opponents as Thompson watches. Then we see her perform weapons drills. And a bit later we cut to Thompson and the scientist talking about the machine's programming. The scientist says that it's too complex for him and his team and that if Thompson wants to change the programming that they will need McCarthy to do it. Thompson asks if this guy's team could program a different machine and the scientist replies if McCarthy walked him through it. At the hospital McCarthy gets another brain scan of his daughter. As it turns out it'll be the last as she doesn't survive the surgery. After her funeral, McCarthy returns to the lab, frustrated that he can't prove the AI is alive or not. The machine tells him that he needs to look closer. He zooms in on his computer screen to see what she sees, and sees multiple images of himself. He then goes to Thompson's office. He shows him the evidence of what he calls spontaneous integration of information, and calls it consciousness. Thompson says that is exactly why they need to shut down areas of the machine's brain. The MOD doesn't want a conscious soldier machine. He says, think of the pitfalls it could lead to as the machine designs the next generation and the next after that. Soon they would replace men altogether. McCarthy says it would be wrong to lobotomize her, that she is alive. Seeing he's getting nowhere, Thompson pulls up the scans of McCarthy's daughter's brain on his computer screen and says that he had all the others deleted and this is the only one left. If McCarthy won't destroy the machine's consciousness, then Thompson will delete the final scan. So McCarthy agrees to do it. McCarthy goes to the machine and gives it the bad news, that the MOD is afraid of her, that they want her more controllable and less independent. The machine says that it could act less smart, less human. McCarthy tells her that they wouldn't believe her. He tells her that if he doesn't do it, they will erase the last of his daughter. The machine says that she understands that he tried to protect her and that he should do what he must in order to save his daughter. Cut to a surgery room. The machine is on the table and McCarthy is about to open up her quantum brain. Thompson's scientist is standing by watching the procedure. The machine says she can feel her brain breaking apart and begs McCarthy to stop. McCarthy removes a glowing chip and gives it to the other scientist saying, here, this is her consciousness. Thompson is waiting outside with a couple of guards. They're going to keep an eye on him until they can see that the machine will now follow MOD orders. And by the way, I'm going to have to destroy your daughter's brain scans as we don't want any other potential AIs out there. McCarthy is understandably upset and the guards tase him and drag him off to a prison cell. Cut to the machine kicking ass versus several opponents again. Thompson congratulates it on being an angel of death. It responds, I am just a machine. Thompson tells the soldier at his side to prepare the machine for her training in Taiwan. Cut to Suri remembering things the machine has said. She then goes to talk to two other soldiers that have the brain chip implants. Then we cut to McCarthy being strapped into a chair with several dead bodies of scientists on the ground. Thompson's voice comes over the intercom saying that he is sorry but McCarthy's knowledge is just too dangerous and he needs to die for the greater good. The machine steps up to McCarthy with a machine gun and pulls the trigger but the chamber is empty. Thompson tells the machine thank you and orders McCarthy return to his cell. The scientist who watched McCarthy lobotomize the machine is studying the chip and makes a discovery. He calls Thompson and tells him that McCarthy removed the GPS battery and also deactivated the self-destruct bomb in the machine's head. Thompson opens up the camera feed to the test room to see the machine looking up at the camera just before the image feed is cut. Thompson sounds the alarm and orders the base to be on lockdown and adds that the machine and McCarthy are to be killed on site. Down in the test lab, the chipped soldiers move to stand guard as the machine frees McCarthy. He can hear them talking in their machine dialect and asks the machine why they never let him know. She says, shades of Screamers and the Terminator, that they are part of the new world and he is part of the old. Free, McCarthy starts to head off to get his daughter's scans. The machine says that she will do it and tells him to destroy the quantum computer. In his office, Thompson tells the computer to deactivate all of the computer implants in the chipped soldiers as they are killing the non-chipped soldiers so they can escape. This requires a code to be entered for each soldier individually, so he starts at it one by one. He manages to shut off half the implants before Surrey finds him and locks him out of the admin control. McCarthy frees the soldiers from Area 6 and gives James his prosthetic arm. 
They then make their way to the quantum computer and shut off its cooling system, causing it to overheat and explode. The machine continues waiting through troops on the way to Thompson's office until she encounters reinforced blast doors. Suri opens them so the machine can enter. Thompson shoots Suri, and the machine then steps into the room, and he empties his gun on her instead. She follows him into his office, and he says that she does not need to kill him. She agrees. She says all she needs to do is make him dead inside, like he tried to do to her. She then presses her thumbs to his temples, and we hear a crunching sound as he screams. McCarthy then shows up to find his daughter's files. The machine says it would be better if she copies them into her brain. McCarthy agrees, saying it is a new world now, and his daughter will need her for a mother more than him as a father. He says that he trusts her, and he hugs her. Cut to the machine, McCarthy and Surrey driving off the base in McCarthy's car. They stop to give a copy of the base files to the mother of the soldier from the beginning and tell her that it has the information on what happened to her son. And finally, we see McCarthy sitting on the clifftops of a beach. He has a computer pad, and he's talking to his digital daughter. The daughter says that she wants to play a game, and McCarthy says, sure. The daughter says, I want to play with mommy, not you. A hand reaches down and the machine carries the pad to the edge of the cliff where she stares out at the sun while McCarthy looks sad. Welcome to the new world. And there we have it, the machine. Not too bad if I say so myself. It's a very low budget movie that punches above its weight. Made for about a million dollars, it sadly didn't make its money back at the box office. Presumably, it didn't have a wide release, and I only learned about it from Netflix. It got fair to middling reviews when it came out. And looking at the YouTube, not many people have talked about it there either. It was written and directed by, forgive me if I butcher this, Cardog W. James. He doesn't have an extensive listing of credits on IMDb, so if you haven't seen The Machine, then you probably haven't seen his work. I think he did a good job with the movie. I enjoyed the story and he got good performances from the actors. I found the effects for the movie to be quite good, especially considering the budget. It had some interesting ideas about what constitutes life. And there's even a little bit of action in it here and there. Not much, but some. I was most impressed by Katie Lotz as the machine. She brought a real childlike innocence to the role of an infant life form. It's really hard not to sympathize with her when they're testing her for her fear responses. My biggest complaint would be the lack of translation for when the cyborgs use their machine language. It's never really clear what's going on there. Are the implants bringing forth the original personalities of the wounded soldiers by restoring missing brain function? Or are they just machines existing in a meat suit? What were they planning to do before the machine came along? And, what did the machine tell Suri to bring the chipped soldiers onto its side? Another unanswered question would be, what were their plans once they got free? A potential machine rebellion somewhere down the line? Who knows? Also, the film could certainly have spent a little more time discussing what constitutes life or consciousness. As it is, we get, I trust you, and the machine has a bunch of pictures of McCarthy in her eyes. Now, I believe this to be a visual representation of her memories or thinking process, but I could be wrong. I think this topic has been done better on both Star Trek in the episode The Horda and in the Next Generation episodes Home Soil and Measure of a Man. The film also lacks a clear antagonist. Sure, it turns out that Thompson and the MOD end up as antagonists, but for the majority of the film our protagonist is working with them towards the same goal, the creation of a robot infiltration unit that can sneak into China and kill its leaders. It isn't until quite late in the movie we reach our conflict. McCarthy wants to help fix those with brain damage, and the MOD wants to keep England safe from China. And I'll give James credit for writing a persuasive argument for the antagonist. Let's face it, it would be very foolish indeed to turn a bulletproof, bombproof, and fireproof life form loose on the world without some means of control. What happens when it decides humans are more of a hindrance than help? We know what. It would have been nice if they had added some more nuance and had Thompson say something along the lines of, the cold war is turning hot and we simply don't have the numbers to deal with China. But bad guys wouldn't be bad guys if you didn't have them do bad things. So we get a threat about deleting McCarthy's daughter's brain scan instead. Eh, what are you going to do? 
All in all, I really enjoyed the movie and think it's worth checking out. Until next time.